Hello, this is Lady Boulay, and welcome back to Black American Lineage. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, for your thumbs up and your comments. Thank you. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, it looks like the immigration situation in some of these cities has really gotten crazy. And I'm asking myself, how bad could it be in your homeland for you to go to a place that you don't know anything about and take your chances based on something somebody told you, a fantasy. It's horrible the way those people are living in New York City. This is from the Associated Press and it says, Black Immigrant Rally in New York City raises awareness about racial and language inequities. See, going to a city that you don't know anything about and you have not only a racial difference, but a religious and a language barrier. So, I mean, I just don't get it. So, black immigrants turned out in hundreds on Tuesday across from New York City Hall during a hearing about racial inequities in the city's shelter and immigrant support systems. They're already having a problem with in a shelter. In a shelter. All right, let's go. Over 1,500 immigrants, mostly from Guinea, assembled in City Hall Park after it became clear that only around 100 people would be accommodated inside for the hearing. The City Council considered relatively minor proposals. One set of bills would require administrators to collect better data on migrants in city services. Another effort, a resolution, called on the federal government to eliminate or to reimburse immigration application fees. City council members are asking for better data because they believe, with some evidence acknowledged by city officials, that black migrants are more often turned away from shelters, denied access to help in their native languages, and less able to find accommodations for religious practices than others. So when they're in their homelands getting these videos about America, they're giving them all this information about black Americans, but they're not telling them that they're gonna be discriminated against the time they get here. I guess they don't give them that information. City officials say African migrants are more likely to arrive to the city without children, meaning they're often less of a priority for limited shelter space. So now they're telling the Africans, you need to bring children. Then when they bring the children, it's going to be another problem. Under a recent legal settlement, the city can evict adult migrants after 30 days in a shelter and 60 days for those under age 23 before forcing them to reapply for another spot. It's unclear how often those migrants end up sleeping on the streets or in a subway car. The 30 to 60 day notices disproportionately affect black immigrants, said council member Alexa Alves, chair of the Committee on Immigration in a gilded hearing room Tuesday. Dozens of immigrants listened to proceedings on headsets with access to simultaneous translations in Wolof, Haitian Creole, Arabic, French, Fula, and Bambara. See, these people are coming over here speaking languages that nobody ever heard of before. In September, President Joe Biden authorized Venezuelans already in the country to receive indefinite immigration protection, making them eligible for work permits. In December, in response to a surge of violence in Haiti, the administration announced an expansion of the program for Haitians. Some countries in Africa, such as Sudan and Ethiopia, are also on that relief list, but not Guinea or other common origin countries of New York immigrants, such as Senegal and Mauritania. And like the relief for Venezuelans, the protections don't apply to migrants who have arrived since the initial announcement. 
Those migrants, many of them Muslim and French speaking, face unique challenges that are not fully mitigated by the city's most well-funded charities, which tend to be Christian-based and have decades of experience serving Spanish-speaking migrants. And that and that's that that's not unusual because Mexico is just across the border and they speak Spanish. The Puerto Ricans speak Spanish. So that's understandable. But well, these people are coming from French speaking countries and also coming from countries where they speak their tribal language. I don't even know what these people think. I'm telling you, common sense is not so common. Well, these people really don't know what they're in for. They are coming here now by the droves. And there are accommodations of a sort in New York. In Chicago, people have started fighting back. And more and more that's going to happen. But And the more the people of New York accept what's going on, the more they're going to get it. I found it interesting that these migrants in New York, they are rallying in New York, going to meetings, instead of rallying in their own countries and forcing their own countries to do right by them. The idea to flee and run to another continent, I mean just a whole other continent, expecting what? When you don't even speak the people's language, you don't eat their food. But you're going there. So, y'all, I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. America needs to put a stop to this. Because these people are going to end up on the streets. They are going to be the bottom cast. Now, they might think they're going to come here and live the life of Riley, but they really won't. Because the country cannot sustain all of this migration. Everybody running here, leaving their country, not even making any demands on their country, just jumping up and leaving to come to America. I mean, it's, it's, there has to be an end to this at some point. So we'll just have to wait and see what it is. Okay, y'all, thank you for listening. Have a good day.